Hey guys, Keith here with another Impact Wrestling review. So we are just two and a half weeks away from Bound for Glory. Um, it was a decent show tonight. Uh, a lot of action going on. We had a couple matches from outside Impact. Uh, one took place in Cancun and the other one in The Crash. Um, but let's get into it. So we actually opened the show with a match between uh, Chris Adonis and Johnny Impact, which this was... Johnny Impact getting retribution against Chris Adonis from last week because uh, after the number one contendership match between Impact and Garza Jr., Chris Adonis had attacked Johnny Impact with a uh, piece of wood. So uh, not a huge surprise here. Uh, Johnny Impact got the win with the uh, countdown to Impact. After the match, of course, Eli Drake had to come out and insert him into this, himself into this, I should say. Um, he ended up... Uh, getting the upper hand, actually Impact ended up getting the upper hand pretty quickly on uh, Eli and ended up ripping his pants off. He had a white suit on and uh, eventually Chris Adonis gets back up and him and Eli double team Impact until Garza Jr. surprisingly comes out and makes the save considering he fought Impact last week. But uh, yeah, that kind of came out of nowhere. So I guess there we'll probably see a tag team match between... Uh, Garza and Impact versus Eli and uh, Adonis, I would assume, either next week or the week after. Um, after that, we uh, go down to Cancun to see a five-way match between James Storm, Phantasma, Eddie Edwards, EC3, and Tejano. Uh, they showed the majority of this match. This was actually, it seemed to be a really good match. Um of course, considering it was three on two, three Impact stars and uh, two AAA stars, which technically it was every man for himself. But uh, you can see in the beginning, I think it was uh, EC3 went for a pin, and the other guys were like, whoa, 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 we're going to work together as a team and uh, beat them up some more first. But uh, the uh, finish saw Phantasma hit like a tombstone on EC3. And outside the ring, Tejano had... Uh, had told James Storm to attack uh, Phantasma's dad, who apparently was at ringside, or he was uh, with the, at the announce table. So James Storm was going to do that, and uh, Phantasma left the ring to attack Storm, and Tejano rolls in the ring and pins EC3, who got hit with that tombstone earlier in the match. Um, so like I said, the match was looked pretty good itself, but uh, we got bits and pieces of it. Then we go over to uh, OVE going to confront LAX, and uh, Conan tells, uh, I guess, one of his guards or whatever that they can't meet him unless they put their titles on the line in uh, the crash. So later on, we'll get to see uh, that happen. And then we go backstage to uh, Cancun, where... There's, I guess, fighting between Storm, EC3, and Eddie Edwards, basically saying that they weren't on the same page, and that's the reason they lost the match. Up next, we have uh, Andrew Everett with, of course, Caleb Conley and Trevor Lee at ringside versus uh, Desmond Xavier. I know for the, there was probably three or four weeks there where I was wondering where Desmond Xavier was, and he's been on the show two weeks in a row, so good to see. Um, surprisingly, Desmond Xavier actually got the win uh, well, not really surprisingly because he's a fantastic athlete, but just because of the two men that were outside the ring who actually interjected themselves in the match a couple of times. But uh, yeah, Xavier got uh, the win with a uh, back handspring kick. It was a beautiful move. Um, and so, yeah, I'm glad they're building him up. We still don't have any clarification on if we're getting an X Division title match at Bound for Glory or what the match is going to be. Because like I said, you've finally starting to add more guys into the X Division, so a multi-man match seems like it would make the most sense. So let me go back to Cancun. Oh, I'm sorry, not Cancun, the crash, where uh, OVE is still searching for Conan. They're calling out his name and everything, and uh, they meet face-to-face -face with the bouncer. So he says, in order to get five minutes with Conan, you guys got to put your titles on the line, which we knew before. But I guess this wasn't told to... OVE themselves, they were still in the process of searching. We just knew about it. And uh, so OVE is like, oh, okay, we could do that. And then they're like, oh, and you want us to win too, right? And he tells the guy to get the F out of the way so he can get ready. 
So that was pretty funny. Uh, they seem to be doing a lot with OVE, which is nice to see because, like I said, I think last week that I've been able to uh, watch more of their stuff outside of Impact to get really an understanding of who these guys are. And I think this is definitely the direction that Impact should be going with building their um, company with talents like this. Um, guys that are more well-known in the independents rather than former WWE stars, considering I heard some rumors that apparently Jack Swagger is supposed to come to Impact, which, nothing against him personally, just I don't want to see former talent here. Um, unless maybe it was Neville or something like that. So, uh, then we go back to the Impact Zone, where, well, first we get a recap of the whole Grado and Joseph Park uh, storyline, I guess you can say. And um, so this is when we go to the ring where Grado comes out and uh, he calls out Joseph Park. He basically says that Joseph has taken advantage of him, stolen money from him, and treated him like a dog. So, uh, well, obviously Park came out before. And then, uh, so Park says he's guilty of these things. And he says that, but however, I'm the one that holds the papers for your visa. And so Park says... Or Grado says, how about you just give me the, the visa here and we can just call it a day. Park goes to give it to him and he says, nah, on second thought. So he pulls out a contract from his other pocket and he says, this is a match, a contract for a match uh, between between two people at Bound for Glory. I don't know if he said between myself, but he said, uh, if Grado wins, then he gets to stay in the country. And if Grado loses, he has to go away forever. So Grado signs the contract, and that's when Joseph Park turns to him and says, you don't read the fine print, do you? And Grado's like, what are you talking about? So apparently this match is going to be a monster's ball match, and he is not facing Joseph Park, but he is facing Abyss. So like I had figured ever since the storyline started with uh, Grado joining uh, Park's corporation or company, whatever you want to call it, um, I knew there was going to be a match at the end, um, so at least they're doing something. Um, after this is over, he can finally move forward. So after this segment, Grado's outside going to his car, and he gets in, and he's flipping through all the radio stations, and a radio station with the number 666 comes up. And so he turns it on, and Abyss's music plays. He goes to press the gas pedal, but there's no pedal there. And he turns around, and Father James Mitchell is sitting in the passenger seat. And uh, he basically uh, scares the crap out of Grado, and Grado runs away. So that was a good segment. Um, I don't know the last time Father James Mitchell has been in Impact. Uh, I can't remember the last time I saw him, but always good to see a familiar face. So then we go back to the crash, where we have that match. And it's between OVE and apparently Black Diamond and Black Danger. No idea who these guys are, unfortunately, as I am not too familiar with the Crash Wrestling Organization, with which uh, I believe on the Global Wrestling Network you are able to see matches from them. So uh, once I get that up and running, I'll, I'll have to check it out. But uh, yeah, this was a fun match. This was more of their independent style of wrestling. I mean, it wasn't terribly long, but there was a lot of good spots um, OV ended up hitting a superplex into a sit-out powerbomb, uh, which I believe they used against LAX. Maybe? I think, I think that was it. Um, but yeah, that, that actually got broken up, and then later on in the match, OV ended up getting the win with a spike tombstone pile driver. It's very similar to the Melter driver. Uh, but yeah, so, like I said... I'm all for pushing of OVE, which I wasn't a while back, but since I've gotten more familiar with them, good stuff. So we go back to the to the impact zone. Uh, Jeremy Borash is in the ring, and he's promoting Bound for Glory. Surprise, surprise. So my favorite and your favorite American top team comes to the ring. They take out Borash, and uh, the crowd was not happy that they were there. They were chanting i'm sure some obscenities and just uh we don't care go away 
So apparently Lambert's been this big wrestling fan. I'm just going to go give a short review because he was out there for quite some time, and it actually was a decent promo. Um, but yeah, he goes on about how he was been a wrestling fan his entire life, and he knows more about wrestling than any of these idiots in the crowd. It's a typical heel work. Um, but then he finally goes back on track saying that, you know, Moose and Bonnard had disrespected him and American Top Team because it wasn't just a place. This was his home. And so he issues a challenge to Moose and Bonner to Bound for Glory to face King Mo and Lashley, but to a fight, not a wrestling match. Um, so Moose and Bonner come out, of course, and since Lashley wasn't in the ring with American Top Team, he comes out from behind Moose and Bonner and attacks them. Uh, they get thrown in the ring. American Top Team beat them down. And a couple Impact stars came down. Uh, Shira came down. For some reason, Caleb Conley and... Uh, Andrew Everett came down, which was a surprise because I was like, well, what was the point in these two? They're heels. This doesn't make any sense, but I guess everything doesn't have to make sense. So, yeah, like I said, it was a decent enough segment considering how much I don't care about American Top Team. Um, and I, I, I guess it'll be interesting at the pay-per-view. Hopefully it puts some eyes or at least helps put some eyes on it. I don't know how much they're actually bringing to Impact with having American Top Team here i mean he was talking about jared too which uh, during his promo which is why i don't understand why they do these tapings i mean i understand financially but for storyline purposes and considering crap happens where things can change in a moment's notice and in impact so oh man but like i said i understand why they do it financially so yeah and then we go back to the crash where OVE finally meets up with LAX and uh, they get surrounded by Conan's boys and uh, of course they jump OVE and uh, OVE is able to hold their own for a little bit but of course they get overpowered and Conan basically says that we're going to be taking the titles back at Bound for Glory. Um, I like that they just kind of interjected this throughout the night. Um yeah, like, there wasn't really too, too much that went on in the actual Impact Zone besides the beginning match, the Andrew Everett match, the Park and Grado segment, and our main event, which I was looking forward to. And last week, I it was actually announced after I did this review that this week we were going to get Ty Valkyrie and Rosemary. And it did not disappoint. This was a good bat match, good back and forth. A um, couple of uh, good spots. Uh, Taya ended up hitting a Northern Light suplex and then flipping Rosemary back over and hitting a double stomp for the win, which uh, I think they're going to keep building Taya up for a little while. And uh, after the match, Taya goes to attack Rosemary, but Rosemary hits her with the red mist. And as Taya's on the ground... Rosemary goes and grabs a microphone and challenges Taya to a match at Bound for Glory. And she says, but it'll involve a different type of red. And the hive wants blood. So I'm not sure what kind of match it's going to be. I would assume maybe a first blood match, which is a little surprising in this day and age anyway. I mean, unfortunately, my main stream for of wrestling is wwe and obviously they have completely shifted away from that so uh but yeah it's it's definitely different and i'm glad that impact can do this and where they can build storyline or just for the women anyway outside of the main title picture which wwe for some reason has a tough time doing but uh yeah Glad to see this being the main event. I was very happy that American Top Team did not close the show like they have a couple weeks in a row. But, um, yeah, two and a half weeks away from Bound for Glory, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. So, if you like what you're seeing here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye.